Hello and welcome to the Light Shine Podcast. I am your co-host, Crystal Ann Compton, and I am here with Trisha Carr. We have got a great podcast episode for you. I'm excited about it because I'm I'm ready to learn. <laughs> um, I know a little bit about this subject, of course, through reading and stuff, but I really I've just there's so many things in the world of of spirit to do and to try and techniques and stuff. And I, I haven't spent a ton of time working with the violet flame and certainly as it compares and contrasts with you. I know that you do. And so I thought we would just kind of maybe do a Violet Flame Primer or a Violet Flame 101 just to get people um, in the know about what the Violet Flame is and and how we can actually work with it. So why don't we start there, Tricia? What is the Violet Flame? You know, you you always diminish yourself. I'll bet you know more than me because I don't think I've read about it as much as oh, I just I channeled about it. So well, I don't the, know. The, the theosophical <laughs> stuff. I've read yeah. like, yeah. I haven't read a lot of that. Mm-hmm. I like some of the, the theosophical stuff, but some of it, you know, when I get a little on one edge of it, I'm like, Ugh, you know, it's a yep. little, it's a little yeah. too dogmatic. And so anyway, so what is the violet flame? Well, the violet flame is, um, it's a spiritual flame. And so this is, flame is often uh, oriented to s- spirit, you know, and to the, um, to the uh, execution, like the crystallization process. And you might say crystallization or healing. And that's really, those are two sides of the same coin. One is go, w- going from one form of energy to another. And so it is, it is, um, it is basically imagery or it's a manifestation and it's a, it's a manifestation of energy in the healing plane or in the causal plane, the creator creation manifesting plane. And so the way that we access it is through our psychic senses, our imaginal senses, our intuitive abilities. And because it is not something that is physicalized, although we can also use physical implements to enhance our engagement with it. So if you wanted to work with the violet flame, you could also light a candle and know that in spirit, you're working with the violet flame and have the physical element of actual fire to enhance your experiencing of it. And even the uh, devas who may be attending to it can be a part of it. So I've been teaching about holy flames. I started teaching about it a little more pointedly in our energy intensive that we had in 2020. So I taught on holy flames there. And then I've been teaching about it more in other places and going into deeper dives of what holy flame work is. And in addition to holy flame work, we've we've been talking about all of the holy elements, crystalline elements. So really the holy flames are like the violet flame. Is It's one of the crystalline elements. Now I'll say this, I always have to qualify this. This term crystalline elements is something that I heard directly from spirit. Now that isn't to say that it may not be simultaneously be happening in other people's awareness, you know, the simultaneous invention that happens even in science, but I haven't read someone else. The reason I say this is because if you go and like Google crystalline elements, it may not turn up anything, or maybe it turns up 10 other people. So I'm neither, I don't want to not attribute because I haven't read their stuff. That's why I haven't. (laughs) If they're if they're talking right. about it, and also I don't know if you can find it anywhere else. But back to the violet flame. So the violet flame is the yeah. one that is most utilized and and worked with, and it is in a way it's like working with color therapy or um, rays, and you know being able to work with color in your energy healing space, whether for yourself or another. Except that it's more potent. It is, it is a crystallization. It is an intensification of spirit and of healing energy as we would know flame to be very potent, right? Very concentrated healing energy. The violet flame itself is said to be attended, and by my experience, attended by Saint Germain, the ascended master, as well as Archangel Zadkiel. And those two have, you know, a connection with one another energetically. And so if you wanted to work with the violet flame, you could call on Zadkiel or St. Germain, or maybe somehow you're starting to, that's how it worked for me. I started, St. Germain started to show up in my meditation and some of my work, even to the point where I was like, I don't think I care about you, St. Germain. Like, can you just send Jesus? Cause I, you know, I really get on with Jesus, <laughs> but you know, St. Germain just started right. to show up. <laughs> and then the violet flame started to work afterward. So does that make sense? It's like, so yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It does, but so you um, compared it to, for example, color therapy. Mm-hmm. Why would somebody want to use the violet flame instead of 
color therapy mm-hmm. or vice versa, really. Right. Well, with u- utilizing energy, uh, color and energy healing, I mean, there's, uh, I, you know, or using light. That's what people do too. Like, well, if you're using color, you're probably using light, like bringing this quality of light into, let's say a person's chakra. Let's say I'm going to bring in a pink light into the heart chakra. And what that might do is it could be, it could illumine it. It could deposit into the heart chakra. You know, it could uh, colorize it so that it gets that, you know, saturation of it and gets that kind of healing quality. But just think about the difference between a light shining on you and a flame, you know, in the physical, the potency of it. Mm -hmm. So if you were to place someone in the violet flame or a violet flame into, you know, an area, then or, or if you were to take, so there's, uh, I'm sorry, let me, I'm, I'm stammering because I'm starting to channel a little bit <laughs> and recall some channeling about mm-hmm. it. <laughs> One time when I was, um, when I really started to work with Violet Flame, I was actually in a workshop where I was channeling uh, from Archangel Zadkiel. And particularly we were working on mindset and mind healing. And Zadkiel took us into a Violet Flame healing session as specifically as it concerned the mental body or the mind. And so the three different ways that Zadkiel had us work with the violet flame was in our, again, in our meditative, our imaginal, and our consciousness project, because we were meeting online. We were all standing in a circle as if we were like, you know, having a healing circle and there's a violet flame ablaze among us. And the first thing that Zadkiel said was you can take something, a belief, uh, a challenge, the concept of this as a as a, like an energetic concept and toss it into the violet flame and it will completely transmute dematerialize and reorganize that energy entirely so that it is then and it's also offered up to the universe and therefore you know in its reorganization is be, becomes a blessing for all of us or directly to you the next thing he said we could do was individually we could walk into the violet flame and have a total mm. transmutation. And knowing that, you know, you have to make sure that you don't think of crystalline flame as something that is harmful, but all of the qualities that we, as spiritual qualities that we associate with fire, the, the physical element of fire, you know, potency, transmutation, able to dematerialize so that's a fresh you know, um, and, you know, the carbon, how it, you know, taking something down to carbon, and then that is a very fertile way to grow something new. Warmth, uh, you know, anything, the spiritual quality that you would give to flame, that's what violet flame or any of the other crystalline flames could do. So then if you take yourself into it, and the, again, crystal, the crystallization, so it basically goes into every part of your being and works as a transmutation mechanism. So all of the cells of your physical body, all of the beliefs, all of the thoughts, all of the the, the emotional uh, landscape of the eddies and flows of emotions, able to go in there and and dematerialize and re and allow it to come back into the right kind of potency. Yes. Can I ask you just a question? When you're doing something like that, when you're mm-hmm. like putting it all on the altar of that flame, if yes. you will, do you need to have some kind of an intention? Like um, it's transmuting into something or I'm this is being transmuted for the highest good. Like what kind of intention do you take into something like that? I think it can be general or it can be, it's, so it depends on, yeah, it can be directed or it does, can be does the flame Does the flame kind of, does the flame know what needs to be done kind of a thing. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? Right. It's working okay. on a level of your subconscious, communicating with your subconscious. And even if you if you do put on the altar your unconscious, it's you know, your intention can be even that of which I am unaware that needs requires healing. I surrender and also take responsibility for this process. So yeah, you could do a general and sometimes I do that just to like shift my my feeling state. I'll just walk into the violet mm-hmm. flame in my meditation so I can shift and pivot just to positivity, you know, and allow it to to uh, transmute things that I may not even be aware of. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, so I'll kind of put that on the altar. But mm-hmm. yes, definitely you could go specifically. And with the casting in of something, you can okay. say this belief, this limiting belief is causing me harm, this specific one, or this, this pain that I have in of this relationship I want to take the part of it that's mine and I want to allow it to be transformed by the violet flame and toss it in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it definitely makes sense. And mm-hmm. so 
you can work with it in an externalized way, as in mm-hmm. throwing something into it, but you can also embody it. Now, is the violet flame something that exists within us already, or is it something that we have to conjure, if you will, or call into the space? Well, that's a great question. I've always experienced, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always experienced as something that I call in, but we're a part of every part of the universe, right? So I would say that it could be something that's always existing in in our field and we are mm-hmm. enhancing it and maybe we would align it with the the seventh chakra because it it is aligned with the seventh okay. the, yeah the violet ray of light so the crown mm-hmm. and but i t- i typically i experience it as something that you conjure you call in you invoke um but you know i guess that's a, that's a really great question someone else's experience may vary um the third way mm-hmm. so we cast in we walk into it and then we all, because we were a group, we stood in the circle and then we allowed the, we welcomed the violet flame to take us all in and to engulf all of us together. So it so like expanded, as, mm-hmm. kind of expanded. Yeah. And, and, okay. and brought all of us in together, which was really beautiful, like a consciousness project together. So, you know, you can really, another okay. way that I work with flames, you know, you just call it forth. And you can just be inspired by it. Think about that inspired, like to be filled with spirit. You can equate flame with potent, potent, potent spirit. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you say you're walking into it, I'm just thinking of the person who's never worked with a violet flame before Mm -hmm. and um, wants to try to do so. When you say walking into it, it's not, is this something you're visualizing? Mm -hmm. Like you get into a meditative state and then you visualize yourself walking into it, or is this something that you actually physically walk into the center of the room and do? A personal, I I don't know if that's a stupid uh, question. (laughs) I think it's great. And again, whatever works for you, for me, I'm usually, I, I do my best work by sitting and being, um, more still, when I'm doing something as focused mm-hmm. as that for, you know, in, in a meditative, in a, in a, you know, self-induced trance or self-hypnosis and that kind of a state. But I, I think that there is very much something to putting some ambulation to it. If you think about, well, you do, you do some circumambulation in your priming you've shared in our courses and there's circumambulation going around to the room in different ways and turning your body in the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. And so, yes, I think the actually utilizing your body is something that could be really um, beneficial and, you know, activating in a lot of ways. But personally, I usually am just doing it. I'm sitting on my own or I'm working with a client and then we are bringing in, you know, and I'm communicating what we're doing and they're in a light state of trance as well, receiving it and so yes, it's like, it's an energy okay. healing technique that is extremely potent. Oh, there's actually, before before I got that from Zadkiel, I believe I was working with my Council of Light. This is some co- a concept in the Council of Light. They are actually keeping the a violet flame as well. Or And I've actually seen different uh, colors or rays of flame as well with my Council of Light. So the Council of Light are the the activators or the of the qualities of light uh, that are attending to your soul and attending to your Christhood path, and the Council of Light. That to me, they just look like pillars of light. They, like, you know what I mean, they're kind of like angels are described, and they're really just vibrational. So I find my Council of Light. If I go and try to have a chat with them, they just vibrate back. And it's almost like a, a profound trust. But what you can do if you're having, what, what they've shown me is when I'm working with my council of light, when I'm having a hard time dropping text or dropping questions, dropping, you know, like letting go, then I can throw it into the violet flame that we're keeping together, trusting and not just, but mm. affirming entirely that whatever I put into the flame is only going to come back better. That's the magic of it. Mm, I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, the only other question I have, I don't want to, you know, go on to too many questions. Fire. <laughs> we'll do another podcast and talk a little bit more about this. But when you talk about the potency versus um, working with any other kind of energy or maybe even emissaries, can you sort of describe what that feels like to you, the practitioner, uh, versus any of those other energies? Like, how does that feel in the physical body, or like, how does that feel in the spirit and in the mentality? Mm, well, I, I guess I think. The best way to describe that is, again, the spiritual qualities that we would know fire, the element of fire, but it's the crystalline, so it's the spiritual flame. And um, and so it does feel potent. It feels excited. It feels warm and comforting. Do you, like, feels- do you, do you get hot? <laughs> is no, there, like, do you actually of- get hot? Do you feel it that way? 
Okay. I don't, right. I don't, but I mean, I do get, sometimes I get a little bit warmed up when I'm doing any kind of healing anyway, but no, I don't like feel, mm-hmm. I, cause I actually, a lot of times when I'm working with holy flames, they actually sometimes seem cool to me. So, you know what I mean? Like the pro, it could be, if we're, it's, it's, um, it's above the physical responses, but yeah, the body still responds physically. So for me, sometimes when I'm walking into, let's say a turquoise flame, it might feel like, like it's, um, freezing, like it's going the opposite way to transmute, but it's still, it's using temperature still, you know what I mean? Like in a sense, but spiritual temperature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so all of so the So not in the qualities. physical body, but like in the, okay. Yeah. And the mental right. and emotional. So somebody who, Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if that was a silly question, but for somebody who might want to work with them, you know, they might be thinking, well, am I going to actually feel like a a warmth or am I going to feel a cooling in the mm-hmm. physical body? Or is it something that's happening in the in the consciousness and in the spirit? Mm-hmm. So yeah. fascinating. So do you work with the, the violet flame or the crystalline flames a lot on your end? I think so. Yeah. You know, um, I currently mm-hmm. am working with them a lot. And then personally, yeah, it just, it will show up and I'll find myself like kind of just calling forth an element and, oh, by the way, let, let's let talk about what the word holy means when we're talking about holy flames, because this is actually kind of in alignment with a little bit of the previous podcast we did. We we're talking about psychic Christianity and the word holy is something that I think people associate with religion and religion putting its stamp on it, meaning one is holy and one is unholy, one is righteous and one is not. But the word holy comes from the word holism, like holistic health. And what holism is, is that that um, the sum of the parts is the, the is greater than the whole. You know what I mean? Like it's an exponential. So it's 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 a holistic experience. That's what a holy flame is, or what's what holiness means. It means oh, wow. to be basically aligned with unity. And so that's how it's, it's an instantaneous, it's a, it's a, it's a strong and immediate transmutation to holism, to holistic, uh, uh, you know, truth. It's kind of like working with Raphael too, you know, Raphael is that it's, mm-hmm. Raphael is the ultimate holistic seer, <laughs> space holder even. Wow. Fascinating. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, I, I know like everyone else probably, I would love to learn more about your channeled crystalline flames. That sounds super fascinating. Maybe you can share some more about that with us going forward too. some Mm -hmm. of those flames and what they do. Yeah. And you know, like I said, all of the crystalline elements are useful. So again, the spiritual qualities of water, we know about flow, we know about emotionality, what it means and the way that you can, you know, you can activate a certain ray. So you could have the violet water and you can immerse yourself in the violet pool or you could work, you could sit next to a violet ocean and allow it to minister to you. You can take mm. a cup of violet water and allow it to cleanse you. And this again, all in your energy healing, your imaginal space and your meditation and so on and so forth with any of the other elements. So explore, just be creative and see what happens. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for the questions. And again, I'm sure you know (laughs) plenty. You're just... (laughs) Yeah, but you're not not using it in the traditional theosophical way. So you're doing it in a different way and you have some different insight about it. So it's really fascinating. Oh, well, thanks, you know, and that's why I say go and be creative yourself and get into your meditation, into your closet, into your energy healing space and see what it means to work with holy flames to you and allow it to happen spontaneously because that is what it feels like when we're cooperating and co-creating with spirit. Well, I guess that we'll call, we'll call it an episode. Do please remember to like, subscribe, share, comment, leave us a review on Apple iTunes or however you get your podcast. Subscribe and click the bell on YouTube. And if you would like to ask us a question, um, talk about a spiritual or paranormal experience you've had, make a suggestion for an episode, you can write to us at podcast at Lightshine Spiritual Academy. Dot com. Also, please do follow us on Instagram. We have a Lightshine Spiritual Academy Instagram. We also have Crystal Ann Compton and Trisha Carr Charm on Instagram. So we would love to hang out with y'all there too. And with that, thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next one. We love you guys. Bye guys. Bye.